the YouTube channel is just called Dice Geeks. Um, so everything that I do is just Dice Geeks. Um, all right, let me go ahead and hit a couple things right here. All right, well, welcome to low to no cost RPG self publishing. Um, this is a big topic. I've given seminar like this last year, but I have worked in some more uh, details and some more uh, information based on questions that a lot of people have. But I do know this is a topic where everybody has questions. And so I'm going to try to get through the uh, kind of the seminar part portion, some of the, my slides kind of quickly, and then that will give hopefully everybody a lot of time uh, to ask questions in chat and I will uh, respond to those because, like I said, this is a topic where um, you can ask a million questions <laughs> because it is um, it is just so uh, interesting and there are so many facets to it. So just to get started, uh, this is who I am. My name is Matt. I run DiceGeeks.com. I have like more than 30 books. Uh, more than 80 products on drive through RPG. I also publish through Amazon. Um, you can see here some of the images of my titles um, that I have uh, on drive through These are specifically from drive through here. Um, and I, I do this full-time, right? So I, I do this full-time and uh, kind of my specialty, <laughs> if you will, is low to no cost. Um, because when I started, I didn't have any money. <laughs> I didn't have any money to spend on this um, or very, very little anyway. Um, so I want to dive in uh, this first topic here. Why? Um, and this this might seem, you know, a little cheap or you might be like, let's get into practical stuff. Um, and, and I get all that. But we have to be clear on why we're doing this, right? Is this just an experiment? Is this a whim you had? Well, that's that's fine. Why are you doing it, right? Um, if you are thinking about this as something more serious, then you really need to know why you're trying to do this, why you are self-publishing, because you're going to come up against some obstacles. You're going to come up against some skills you don't know, um, and you're going to have to try to figure those out. Um, and if you don't know why you're doing this, if you don't know why you're publishing, um, that's, you know, it's just going to cause a big problem and you're going to maybe give up or something when you didn't really want to, you know, um, if you try it, if you try self-publishing and it's not your thing, hey, you know, give it up. Uh, that's not a problem. You know, we shouldn't be ashamed of that. I know a lot of people sometimes talk about that. Oh, you gave up. Well, if it's not your thing and it was just an experiment, then, you know, who cares? Um, but you know, if you're thinking this is more serious and you really want to try to do this, well, then you need to really figure out why you are doing this. And, you know, my why starts kind of way back. Um, well, in 2014, a friend of mine passed away and, um, you know, he was 36 years old. He left, a, a, you know, a widow and three little kids. And um, uh, at his funeral, I was seeing people that I hadn't seen in 10, 15, 20 years, 25 years. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, somebody's saying they're sorry to hear this. And thank you for that. Um, yeah, I know it's it's a little heavy to start out in the morning with something like this. But, you know, at his funeral, um, I met some old friends and they were all asking questions. Um, say, you know, Matt, uh, did you ever do anything with Anarchy? <laughs> and Anarchy was um, this role-playing game that I created so we could play like in a Mad Max world when we were teenagers and in our early 20s. And my friend who passed away, Shane, was a big play tester of mine. Uh, we played in several campaigns and with some of my other friends and that. And, you know, I, and I just thought, you know, I, I was driving home after his funeral and talking to my wife and I was just like, you know, I should just put together Anarchy self-publish it. I'll put Shane's name in there, say dedicated to Shane. And that would, that would be an awesome way to honor my friend and fulfill a dream that I had had for a long time was to publish something. Well, that turned into a big ordeal, right? I, 
I didn't, uh, I, I went back and I pulled out notes and old files on my computer of anarchy and it was a mess, right? So it took me about a year, year and a half to kind of figure out a lot of things, put together new rules and stuff for the game. And in the, right at the end in December of 2015, I, I published Anarchy. Um, and I was able to dedicate it to him. And, and what that experience did was it really kind of awoke something in me, right? Because I played Dungeons and Dragons the, for the first time when I was nine years old. I was introduced to tabletop role playing games when I was nine years old, and I at that time, right? I wanted, I, I just thought like I want to make dungeons. I want to run games. I want to do this, and so this was kind of awakening something all the way back when I was nine years old. I even when I was a teenager, when I was like maybe barely a teenager, I think I was like 12 or 13, I wrote to Steve Jackson Games and they sent me their submission packet, right? To, uh, I was going to submit stuff when I was like 13 years old in, in 19, whatever it was, uh, 1987 or 88 or whatever it was. And I was going to submit stuff and uh, to Steve Jackson Games. I don't know if I ever did. I don't think I ever actually sent anything, but I got their packet and I got all their stuff because I think you needed a computer. Um, they wanted it submitted on a, you know, on a WordPress file. And I was just like, I'm longhand writing out stuff on loose leaf paper. So I couldn't support, you know, submit anything. Um, but when, um, okay, somebody in chat is saying they started playing d d at eight and they also talked to Steve Jackson games about their games. Yeah, they had an open submission policy back then. Um, that was really awesome. But really to, to kind of get back, you know, we need to understand why we're doing this, right? And um, like I said, if it's like an experiment, if it's a whim, something like that, hey, just be honest. Say, hey, I'm going to try it out. Maybe it won't work. Maybe it will. Who knows? Um but if you're thinking this is something serious you want to do, make sure you have a strong why, okay? Because um, you're going to come up against some, some pretty hard obstacles. You're going to come up against some challenges. You're going to need to learn some new skills. You're going to, you know, have to figure out some business aspects of things. Um, you know, it's not all just writing stuff. Um, you have to figure out marketing. You have to figure out a lot of things. So be strong on your why, and uh, that'll take you a long way. Um, also, you know, what are your goals and what do you want to accomplish? These, this is a, you know, understanding your goals and understanding what you want to accomplish is huge when you start a, a project like this or an endeavor like something like this, because, you know, my goal um, uh, at first was just to have a book that I could put Shane's name in and say dedicated to Shane, right? Um that was my goal. I accomplished that goal and I could have stopped there, but then I, I realized I wanted to do something else. And so I started changing my goals and that's fine too, right? Maybe your goal right now is just to say, I want to experiment with self-publishing and I love RPGs. And so I'm going to put something out and you just make this, you know, a, a, a very small goal. Maybe you're saying to yourself, Hey, you know what? Um, I'm not really digging my career that I'm in right now. And I would like to do something like this. Well, then you're going to have some different goals, right? You're going to have some, you know, serious business goals or serious, you know, monetary goals that you're going to set for yourself to really kind of do something like this. And also, you know, our goals and what we want to accomplish answer questions like, should I, you know, that they, they always kind of have the word should in there, right? Should I publish on drive-thru? Should I publish on the DM skill? Should I publish on Amazon? Should I publish on some other platform? You know, I can't answer those questions without knowing what your goals are. What are your goals? You know, what what do you want to accomplish? Do you do you just want to make something for your friends or do you want to make something for a wider audience? You know, when you set those goals, those are going to answer a lot of those questions of should. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I publish here? Should I publish there? Should I, you know, go to conventions? Should I, you know, that's all depends on your goals. So be clear on your goals and that's going to answer a lot of those questions. All right. So here are some key pieces of advice. You know, um, don't get overwhelmed, right? If you start this and you you have a, a, a strong why and you have some goals set, um, don't get overwhelmed. Don't think about like the end step of, don't think about, you know, me here with 30 books and say, how do I get to 30 books, right? You know, how, how do I do that? Um, 
how do I do that? Don't think about that. Think about some of the small stuff, right? Think of the um, thinking of, you know, take it piece by piece and a little bit by a little bit. You know, if you think of something like, oh, I have this role playing game that I've been working on for like 30 years or 20 years, and it's going to be 600 pages, and it's going to be, you know, um, all this, you know, all, all these things, you know, thinking about that can just really kill it right it can get you know it can kill you trying to do it because you're going to get overwhelmed with all the pieces that you need to figure out um and so you really have to kind of you know take things by bite-sized pieces right bite-sized chunks so you don't get overwhelmed and somebody has posted in chat um Yes. Um, so somebody posted in a chat and they say, I su suspect making a living in indie games chance of financial success similar to the chance of financial success. I'm going to self-publish ebooks on Amazon for, for $3 a pop scenario. Um, there's probably some level of I need this many titles in existence and being broadly social media advertised uh, on this and many other platforms before I can look at reducing income from your day job. Um, yeah, that that is pretty much very true, right? Um, you 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 know, especially if you're going this route, especially if you're going the low to no cost self publishing route. Okay, I have a different mindset. I have a different model than some people that you'll see out in the RPG space. Um, if you are low to no cost, yeah, you probably are going to need. A number of titles. Um, you are going to need um, some advertising. You're going to need some really good marketing. And um, like I was just saying with the don't get overwhelmed part, right? Don't, don't really, you know, kind of front load a lot of that stuff, right? Take, take it step by step. If you need, you know, if you need a title, get a title out there, right? If you don't have anything published, what are you going to advertise? You know, what are you going to market if you don't have a book or a scenario or whatever you want to publish? What, you know, take some steps to get to this place to then you can say, okay, I've learned this. This is interesting. Maybe this is for me. Maybe this is not for me. And then, you know, go here and then try to figure out those steps. Um, all right. And then um, the next one is we're doing the best we can do, okay? Um, we're doing the best that, like, I'm doing the best that I can do. You should do the best you can do, okay? So I am not under any illusions that I can make a book as good as Wizards of the Coast can, okay? I am sitting here in my bedroom <laughs> that doubles as my office, right? Um, uh, Wizards of the Coast, um, I don't know how much they spent on the new spell jammer that is dropping, but I would imagine it's in the millions of dollars. Um, I don't have millions of dollars. I don't have 30 writers and 20 game designers. I don't have 50 proofreaders. I don't have... Uh, all of the best artists in the world on a, on my file in my you know contacts list that I can contact all those and I don't have millions of dollars that I can drop right um on a project like that so I'm not under any illusion that I can make a, a book as good as Wizards of the Coast right I'm gonna make the best book that I can make and when I first started that was a different level of quality than I can do now because I've gotten better so do the best you can do. Don't worry about doing the best somebody else can do, okay? Do the best you can do and learn and get better. All right, so this last piece here, this is probably the most controversial for uh, some people out in the space, and this is do everything yourself, okay? Um, if you want to keep cost low, if you want to follow the low to no cost self-publishing model, you're going to have to pretty much do everything yourself, okay? Um, with the exception of maybe having a proofreader or something here or there. Um, but when I started, right, I didn't even have a proofreader, <laughs> okay? Um, nobody understood what I was doing. My my wife, my family, my friends didn't really understand 
what I was doing. Okay. Um, and so I didn't have anybody who was really willing to proofread anything for me. So I just had to, I just had to make things. I read it over and I published it. And I'm sure there were tons of mistakes because I've gone back and corrected a lot of those mistakes and had a proofreader go over them because now I can have a proofreader go over them. Um, because now people understand what I'm doing and I can I can pay a proofreader a little bit of money because um, I'm making money from my books. Uh, but like I said, this is the controversial part. People will say, oh, well, your book will be better if you have artists and you have designers and proofreaders and you hire you know, a, a team manager <laughs> to manage your project or something. Uh, yeah, it probably would be, but... All those things cost money, right? Those people cost money. They should be paid, right? Artists should be paid. Uh, uh, editors should be paid. But if you're if you're working on this model, right? Even if you give somebody, even if you don't have upfront cash, and and you say, oh, I'll give my editor ten percent. I'll give my artist ten percent. I'll give my proofreader ten percent. I'll give you know this other person ten percent. Well, how much? How many percents are left, <laughs> right, for you? And if we're talking about some kind of you know a low volume product, well, all your money is gone, right? Um, at that point. So in this model, let's, uh, you know, kind of keep in mind, realistically, we're probably going to have to do everything ourselves. That means we're going to write it. We're going to, we're going to do the layout. We're going to find art somewhere. We're going to do all of it. We're going to then market it. We're going to do that ourselves. Um, that will keep your costs extremely, extremely low or even free in, in some cases. So here are just some other pieces of advice uh, really quickly. Start small. Um, you know, I know, I know so many game masters, right? We have our huge project, right? We have that project in our back pocket that we've had there for a long time. And it is 600 pages. Uh, it is full of original art, right? We can see that original art. We can see this, this game system, this intricate game system that we want. Um, we can all see that. Um, don't start with that. <laughs> don't start with that, right? I still have mine. I still have my game system, my, my, my secret game system that it's, that's all, you know, it, that would probably be 600 pages or maybe be even, even like two books that are like 600 pages each. Uh, I haven't published that yet. Why? Because it's too big. It's too big for me to publish at the place I'm at, right? Because, you know, I, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to talk to people, right? I'm trying to talk to people who probably don't have experience in the publish, publishing industry, right? I did not. I didn't have any experience managing huge projects. I didn't have experience, you know, really even laying out books. Um, I mean, I experimented with layout programs when, you know, on, um, uh, you know, on a computer in like the, you know, the 90s and the, the early 2000s, but I never did any layout or graphic design professionally or anything like that. Um, so I had to learn these things. So I, my advice to you would be to start small. Start very small and even a one page, two page, three page, something or other, you know, um, that you can write, that you can put together. And then um, I would advise you to start either with Drive Through RPG or the DMs Guild. Um, pick one. Don't, don't try to do both at the beginning. You can expand later, um, but pick one. If you're on Drive Through, you know, if you're if you want to do original campaign settings, original game systems. Um, even uh, campaign settings for 5e, um, you're going to be on, you're going to be publishing on drive through RPG. Um, if you want to use, you know, if you want to create things that are set in Eberron or set in the Forgotten Realms or something like that, you're going to be on the DMs Guild. Okay. Um, and I would advise you to please uh, pick, pick one of those. And, and focus on one of those at the start. And then you can expand later on as you gain more experience, right? Because at the beginning, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to fill out, you know, uh, you're gonna have to create an account on drive through You're gonna have to, you know, uh, do some of those things. And th that can be tricky if you haven't done something like that. So get all that filled out, publish something really small, and you'll know the process for later on when you're gonna tackle something, something bigger. Um, digital products only. This is to start. Making a PDF is very simple, okay? Um, 
when you try to move into print, you're going to want to have some experience before you move into print. Okay. Um, but start with digital products. Talk about as simple as can be, right? You just have a PDF. You just upload a PDF. People just download the PDF. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff that comes along with print, right? Because there are some additional issues that come along trying to put a book into print. But at first, you can learn some of those steps, get out some digital products, and then move into print once you have kind of built some of that confidence up, okay? Um, just really quick, here's some software you can check out if you want to keep uh, things cheap. Um, you don't have to buy the whole Adobe suite if you're not making any money, <laughs> right? Um, please don't do that if, you know, don't spend $80 a month on the Adobe suite if you're not making any money from this or you don't use it in another professional capacity. Um, GIMP is an imaging editing software, so it's like the open source free version of, I guess, the equivalent would be Photoshop. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it is free. It's a little harder to use than Photoshop, but it's free. And so if you need to manipulate or edit images, GIMP is a great alternative. And if you've never used anything like this, there are some awesome, awesome uh, tutorials on YouTube. Uh, look for short ones, right? If you need like how to make text in GIMP, three minutes, watch that. There are some that are like four hours long. That'll kill you, right? That's that's spirit crushing kind of stuff, right? You don't want to, you don't want to try to slog through a three hour tutorial. Look for three minutes, two minutes, five minute little tutorials, and you can figure out uh, GIMP pretty easily, um, or at least certain things that you need to do. You may not become an expert at it, but you're like, oh, I can blend an image into the page. I can crop an image. I can do this. I can copy. I can make the background transparent. You can do things like that. You know, change the color of an image. You can learn how to do things like that. Maybe you're not an expert, but you can learn how to do that. And GIMP is free. Uh, Scribus. Scribus is a free layout program. So uh, the, the, the equivalent to this would be Adobe InDesign. Um, which cost obviously a lot of money, but Scribus is free. Um, uh, Scribus, there are tutorials again on YouTube. There's a really good one by a, a man who's actually laying out an RPG. He's laying out a, a tabletop RPG. I think that one's about 20 minutes or half hour long. That was, I watched that and I learned how to use Scribus because uh, his tutorial was so good. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have a link for that, but I should get a link for that because it was such a good video. Um, but Scribus is free. Again, it's not as easy to use as InDesign, but it's free. <laughs> so you can do layout there. But also, you know, I just put Google Docs here. You can do layout in Google Docs. You don't even have to mess with Scribus un unless maybe you're going to print or something like that. But Google Docs, you can do a layout and then you just press save as a PDF. You can lay out images, you can lay out borders, you can do all of that in Google Docs for free. You could also use Word if you have Word. Word does all of that. Um, uh, the biggest issue with say Google Docs or Word is if your document is longer than like 40 or 50 pages, if your document is longer than like 40 or 50 pages and you're trying to use Google Docs to do a layout or Word to do a layout, you're going to you're going to go crazy, right? You're going to lose your mind. Um, it's really good. They are really good with short things. Um, Scribus, you know, two, three, four, five hundred pages. It's fine. You know, not a problem. Uh, but Google Docs or Word, you know, 10 pages, five pages, 20 pages. You're, you're great, but if you start trying to go over 40, 50 pages, it's going to get, it's, you're, you know, you're going to, you're going to wish you would download Scribe or something like that. Um, but uh, that is just some tips there to, to save you money. Okay. To try to save you some money. You don't have to go out and buy expensive software before you're making money. Right now, I use the Adobe Suite now because my my business makes money. Um, at the beginning, there was no way, no way I could have ever afforded that. All right, just a little about art because people are always talking about art, right? Artists deserve to be paid, okay? They do incredible work and they deserve to be paid. What's the problem? I still don't have 
even though my company now is making money, I still don't have money to really pay for original art because it is so valuable and it's so expensive. Okay. Um, uh, so you need to really uh, think about art and how to do this and how to approach art in a very smart way. Okay. And so uh, stock art, never turn up your nose at stock art. Okay. There are sites out there. iStock, stock shutter stock. Adobe has a, a, a Adobe stock footage or stock um, images um, on drive through RPG artists upload stock images, there, stock art that you can buy. Um, they are fantastic. A lots and lots of them are beautiful images, full color, full, you know, full, um, you know, cover images that are beautiful, right? Um, and they are affordable. Also, interior art, uh, like black and white fillers that go on pages. On Drive Through RPG, there is some beautiful artwork on there uh, that costs a dollar, a dollar twenty, right? You could take a thirty-page book and put in filler art for thirty bucks, right? And it will um, be incredible artwork. Now, the thing with stock art and the thing with all art like this is you have to search for it, right? You're going to spend time looking for it because you need to find something that goes kind of with what you are doing, right? Um, so it, the time here is going to be, you're going to have to look for it, right? That's where you spend time. Unsplash.com. Unsplash.com is just a website that has uh, images, you can use them for free. All these images in this presentation, all these images of cool dice, they all come from Unsplash. You can just use them for free. Um, and you just download them and use them for free. Um, and Unsplash is awesome. Public domain images. This is something that people don't think about a lot, um, but it is so critical. If an image is a certain age, I think now it's like 1923 or or something 1923 and beyond or and back, uh, those images are free to use. They are in the public domain and they are free to use in your games. So um, I created a book, um, Wild West, my book of random tables, Wild West. Guess who did the art for my book? Wild West, uh, Frederick Remington, right? One of the greatest uh, Western artists of all time, right? He did all the artwork. Or my book because all of his artwork is in the public domain and there are beautiful huge images online and i laid out the cover i put them all on the interior and it is beautiful um my steampunk my book of random tables steampunk guess what there was an artist in like 1880s france he he made a whole book and drew all these pictures of what he thought the future would look like with weird airships and stuff. Guess what? He did the art for my steampunk book. Um, and it is amazing. There is art out there. Um, some of the greatest artists in the world, you can put a Rembrandt on your cover. If it goes along with whatever your setting is or whatever your work is, you can put those images in your book and they look amazing. Again, here you have to search, you have to look, you have to sift through some public domain. There are some great there are some great uh, resources online, uh, Wiki Commons, Wiki uh, Creative Commons. You can go on there and find art, and it will tell you copyright expired in the public domain, and you know you're safe to use that, at least in the United States. I cannot speak, uh, actually, anything in this that I'm talking about, I cannot speak to another country, okay? Especially later when I get into some other things. I, I can't speak to another country, but in the United States, um, it will tell you if the if it if the image is in public domain. Um, if you're doing a pirate theme game, uh, you know all those. Um, I think the the artist's name is Henry Pyle. Those famous images of pirates like standing on the beach or ships. Those are all free. Those are all free in public domain, and you can use those, and they're gorgeous. So always think about art in that way. Print on demand. Um, once you get to a stage to where you want to do print books, print on demand is amazing. Print on demand is a game changer. Okay. If you remember back, you know, I'm, I'm uh, 48 years old. Uh, if so, I, I know the eighties, I remember the eighties. I remember the nineties. Um, if you wanted to self-publish a book, 
in the uh, 1990s, uh, what would you do, right? You would have to lay out like 10, you know, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in cash. You would get, you know, two, 3,000 books shipped to your house and you would put them in your basement, right? And then you would be like, how do I sell these? Um, some, some people still do that today and, and I don't really understand it. If you're keeping low to no cost, print on demand is amazing because you just upload your files most of the time, if you're going through drive-thru RPG, it's free. If you're going through Amazon, it's free. Some other places you'll pay a little bit of a fee uh, to upload, but Amazon's free, drive-thru RPG is free. You upload your file. And if somebody buys the book, the book is printed and sent out um, to them. You don't keep inventory. You don't deal with customer service. Um, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars. You don't have to have books in your basement gathering dust trying to figure out how to sell them. They're on a marketplace already, ready to sell. Uh, don't turn up your nose at print on demand. Some people say, oh, the quality is not what I want. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. I don't care. Um, I, you know, I buy print on demand books, you know, all the time because I buy way too many role-playing games as I'm sure some people have the problem with um, here. Uh, they look great. They look fine. My books, you know, when I proof my books, they look fantastic um, in uh, you know, the print on demand books look fantastic. Um, now copyright and trademark. I am not an expert here. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a copyright or trademark lawyer. So you can take things that I say about this stuff with a grain of salt. I don't have, uh, much to say about these, but what I do say is, you know, your work is protected automatically when you write it. Um, you don't have to, uh, register, you know, a copyright or trademark. There are some cases where you definitely should do that. Um, uh, but what I was, my main point here, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert on this, so I don't want to lead you astray or anything. But the main thing that I want to bring out here is never, never hold on to something and don't publish it because you think it's going to be stolen. Okay. Your work is copyrighted automatically, even if you don't register it. Um, don't let this stop you, right? Um, this was some things that stopped me in the past, right? I was like, oh, well, I, I, I'm trying to figure out the copyright and I, you know, and I'm, those were all excuses, right? I had to get over that and I just had to, I just had to publish it, okay? I just had to publish some stuff and get it out there. If you want to know more about that, there are lawyers out there you can talk to. There are experts. There are some great articles online that you can really talk to. Like I said, I, I don't have much to offer. Um, it is important, and you should look into this, but don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop you from publishing. If this is your dream, if this is what you're going after, publish. Get it out. Your work is protected. There are some technical things about registering that are very important, so look into it. But don't let it stop you. Don't don't let it stop you from publishing um, if this is really what you want to do, right? Don't use it as an excuse. Sole proprietorship, LLC. Uh, last time I gave this presentation, a lot of people had questions about this. So again, in the United States, uh, this is all I'm talking about in the United States. If you're in another country, I apologize. I, I don't know um, anything about <laughs> what the laws are in another country. Um, sole proprietorship. Um, you are a sole proprietor automatically in the United States, right? You can do business under your name and with your social security number just automatically. You can um, you can sell a service, you know, right? You can you can whatever whatever the service is. You can cut somebody's lawn. You can clean their house um, without setting up a business or something, right? Um, uh, you are just a sole proprietor automatically. You can make um, you know whatever sock monkeys and sell them at a flea market just you know you're just a sole proprietor automatically you don't have to set up a business you don't have to do anything like that um i recommend just start off that way um actually i'm still a sole proprietorship um i probably should set up an llc right now but there's um the big thing about an llc and that is a limited liability uh company or corporation um and what that is is that protects you from liability okay so if something bad happens with your product and you have as a sole proprietor you're on the hook for that but if you have an llc and something bad happens the company takes that hit you personally do not take that hit <clears throat> now 
selling digital products of a role-playing game, there's very little liability in that, right? Or selling print books. If somebody doesn't like what I I make them, I'm I'm more than happy to give them a refund. I'm more than happy to give them something back. Um, the, but the limited liability company, um, that would be like something like if if you're selling like a toy that has like gears on it where a child can cut their finger or something on it, you need to have an LLC immediately because. Uh, you could be held responsible for that if you're a sole proprietor. Um, you know, if you're making something where somebody could become sick, like if you're if you cook food, right? If you cook, if you make brownies and sell them, uh, you should definitely have an LLC because people could get sick, and you don't want to take that hit personally. But for role playing games, um, you know, there's not much liability, right? Nobody's going to get hurt downloading my PDF, right? They, they can't get hurt. They can't get injured. So having a limited liability company is just something I haven't done yet because when you're a single entity, when you're just a single person that has an LLC, you're just covered for liability. It doesn't really help you with taxes or anything like that. Taxes are, are still normal. Um, so it doesn't help you to have that. It, it just protects you from liability. I probably should set up one um, and I probably will here in a, in a little bit. It's just... Um, it's just all time and what uh, you want to do. But don't worry about any of this to start. Just start with your name and go. Um, don't worry about it. If you use it as an excuse, then that probably should tell you that you don't really want to do this anyway. So just uh, don't use it as an excuse to start operate as a sole proprietorship. Don't worry about it. All right, taxes. Uh, the last time I gave this, everybody, oh my gosh, all the, all the questions were about taxes, taxes, taxes. What do you do with taxes? Well, first off, um, you you want to worry about taxes, right? Because if you're if you're worried about taxes, when taxes come up, that means you made money, okay? And money feeds our children. Money, uh, you know, puts roofs over our families' heads. <laughs> um, so if you're worried about taxes, good. Uh, hopefully you've made some money. Um, uh, taxes, you know... People, you know, I guess I should say if, if you know, again, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a tax attorney. Um, so take this with a grain of salt if you're worried about it. You know, if you have a complicated tax situation right now, if you have different programs or different situations or things and it's complicated, you know, doing this probably won't make it easier. But um, it's, uh, you know, the taxes for role-playing games are creating something like this and selling a digital online product or a digital on, you know, a digital or, or a print online product like this are pretty straightforward, okay? And like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, here telling you definitive answers. If you want to know more, uh, you can definitely look into that later on um, and, you know, talk to a professional about it if you're worried about it. But again, don't use this as an excuse if this is something you really want to do. If you have if you have a day job and you're working on this stuff part time um, at the end of the you know, at the end of the tax year, you're just going to gather up the income that you made and it'll be a 1099 miscellaneous income form and you just submit that and it just goes into your calculation. No big deal, you know, totally easy. Um, if you go full time like I am. Uh, you have to pay estimated tax payments, you know, quarterly throughout the year. Um, you know, it's super simple. The IRS makes it very easy for you to give them money. It is a very simple process just to log into the irs.gov and just go click and I give them money. Um, it, they make it really simple. Uh, so it, it's not, it's not too complicated. Um, don't get upset. And really, when you're first starting, if you haven't made a dime, don't worry about this at all, right? And um, if you put out a book and you make 10 bucks in a year or something, it's not going to be that big of a deal, right? You just file a 1099 uh, miscellaneous for 10 bucks or 15 bucks, and you know your taxes won't even change or, or anything like that. Uh, but you do have to report any income, all right? That is, that is one thing I do know. If you make a penny, you got to report that as income, okay? report it as income. Um, it won't change anything on your taxes, but you got to report any income as far as I, as far as my understanding. Um, the biggest thing about business and taxes though, the biggest, actually the most important thing to know is you need to keep everything separate. Um, and this is just for organizational stuff. And, you know, if, 
you know, I don't know why the IRS would ever decide to audit me because they would pay their agents way more money than it would cost. You know, the audit would cost way more than they would get ever from me. So I have no idea why they would audit me. But if you keep everything separate, this just, this just helps your record keeping. And so when it comes to, say, you start do making money and you can deduct your business expenses and your advertising and things like that from your taxes, which are very important if you start making money, you want to have everything separate. And so I really say, hey, you know, go to one of the big online banks, set up a free bank account. Don't pay any fees for this. You can get a big reputable name, Capital One, whatever some of the other ones are. Um, you can get a free bank account through them. No minimum deposits, no fees, no nothing like that. And then get a business credit card. And again, from a big name, American Express, whatever, no annual fees. Don't pay for anything like that. <laughs> Just get some of those. And that way you can keep things separate. But now with the credit card, I wrote this big down here at the bottom, bold, italics. This is not to say get a business credit card and then put start charging things on that card. Okay, don't go into debt for this stuff. Never put anything on that card that you know you that you can't pay off, right? Once you get into that interest rate stuff, that's a nightmare, especially when you're starting a business rolling like this. Don't, you know, even if it's a hundred bucks and you say, I can't take a hundred bucks from my family's budget, don't put it on that credit card unless you really, you know, don't put it on that credit card unless you know the business, not you, the business can pay it off, right? Um, but you want to have a credit card like that just on hand. So when you do make a big purchase, you know, when I do make a big purchase now for my business, I get those points and I can spend those points, um, you know, on hotel rooms and things like that, or travel or just get cash back is what actually I do. I just get the cash back from redeeming my points. And it also just helps to have a credit card, you know, with some recurring charges like the Adobe suite. Now that I can afford the Adobe suite, it just really helps. To have a credit card for that go to go on to, but I know I can pay it off, right? I don't care. I pay it off at the end of every month. I don't carry any interest charges. Never, never, never do that for a business, especially that's small and that maybe your family doesn't understand. Okay. So don't don't tell your, you know, your your spouse or your significant other that it's like, oh, I well, we have a new credit card and I have six hundred dollars in debt here and it's racking up interest charges because I was trying to start a new business. Don't don't do that. Don't 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 don't. Okay, um, that's just my my little advice right there. Hopefully, I didn't go over the top or anything um, with that. But please, please do not go into debt for a business like this when you're when you you know if you especially if this is the first time you're starting a business or you don't have any experience uh you know publishing or anything like that all right so that is the meat of the presentation we have yeah more than 15 minutes here we have about 18 or so minutes um left in time and i definitely want to answer some questions some others have popped up in chat please put questions into chat um i want to definitely take time for a discussion here um i'm going to get a drink really quick and then i'll start looking at chat um a few have come up um Somebody says they were looking for stock art, but it looks like it may be limited. Um, it, I, I don't know about that because there is a lot of stock art. Um, and I can usually, you, you need to have a, a creative eye. You need to, you know, use your imagination. iStock has millions of images, Shutterstock, millions of images, Adobe uh, stock images, millions. Drive through RPG, drive through RPG can be a little limited, but there are some amazing artists on there, and you do have to you have to sift on drive through RPG. You really have to sift through those, and sometimes you won't see them. Sometimes you'll just type in like fantasy art or something, and you'll get a huge list, and you won't see exactly what you need until you sift through some of those or think of some better keywords. So always keywords, always use your imagination. Um, think about it. Yeah. And then somebody posted some creative commons. Um, and there are modern images that the copyrights do expire. Or people release some of their copyrights. Absolutely. And there's a link in chat there um, for free images. Um, somebody just says, thank you. Um, uh, that they have to drop and they're looking forward to watching later. Okay. So um, you said you could use royalty-free art 
as interior art, can you also use it for cover art? I know the cover must look professional. Yes, um, absolutely. You can use royalty-free art as interior art. You, you can also use it for the cover art. The cover, you know, yeah, it, it must look professional, but there are some beautiful images out there. Um, for $12, you know, some of my covers, I just spent $12 for an image and they're beautiful um, and they're amazing looking. Yeah, if they're stock art, right, somebody else can use it on their cover. Somebody else can use it, but don't worry about that. It's going to look different. Everybody lays out the cover a different way. Uh, don't don't just worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, the the royalty free art um, on Drive Through RPG. Um, I would challenge you go to Drive Through RPG today. Type in stock art or type in color stock art. Um, there are several artists that will blow your mind and you could buy a cover art, full cover, professionally drawn for 20 bucks and put it on your cover. Um, so somebody asked about the accessibility of things created with Scribus. Uh, that could be an issue. I had some problems with Scribus. Um, Scribus is the free layout software. I had some problems with certain readers and stuff not being able to access files created in Scribus. Um, I did have some problems with that. So that is a concern. Um, usually it was a very small percentage, um, but um, there are some issues with files from Scribus. You should be aware of that if you're gonna use Scribus. Um, if you're using Scribus to create your print file, there shouldn't be any issue. Um, there are too many issues. You might run into an issue on drive through RPG, which uses lightning source. Sometimes a Scribus print file won't go to light, lightning source, won't accept it. Um, so you have to work that out. Um, so Scribus can have some problems, but it is free. Um, um, okay, so somebody here asks, if you have somebody who is willing to finance you, what consideration and or percentage should you consider, consider, especially if they are willing to be a majority par partner? And I do apologize. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea how to answer this question uh, because I've never had anybody finance me. Um, so I, I'm, I apologize. I cannot answer that question. I don't know what you would give them. Um, I mean, obviously it would be based on how much money they give you, I guess, um, but I have, I have no idea how to answer that. So I, I, I apologize. Um, uh, you would just have to make sure you can still make enough money if, if you're giving them a certain percentage that you can make enough money. So that's, that's always important to think about. Yeah, somebody still asks accessibility options in Scribus. There are some problems. You'll have to look into that. But what's the upside? It's free. And it's a layout program that can get you really started in what you're doing. All right. And so somebody says they depend on screen readers and magnification. So I can't read print books. Accessibility of digital fires is huge to me. Um, so yeah, that is an important issue um, about people who need to magnify things. Um, I think Scribus will work on certain readers, but there were certain readers it did not work on. So that is, uh, you know, an interesting uh, thing to look into, especially if you're talking about, you know, the magnifying images. What did you do in regards to marketing when you were starting up, aka what worked and what didn't early on? Um, this is a huge Huge question. Um, it's almost another seminar. Um, I know I, I gave a marketing seminar at a convention that I went to and like nobody showed up because <laughs> um, nobody wants to think about marketing, but it's the most important thing, right? 20% of this, of self-publishing is writing and publishing your book. 80% is marketing, right? Uh, I should do a whole new seminar on marketing. Um, when I was first starting out, I just very, I did very small things. Um, I, I gave away, you know, some free one sheet stuff and posted them like on Reddit and things like that to get people going to my drive through RPG page. Um, 
I did some things like that. That worked pretty well. You got to be very careful posting self, you know, self promotional stuff on Reddit, though. You got to be very careful doing that. Um, you'll get banned very quickly. But you usually, if you give away something for free, you can get away with it. Drive them to your RP, you know, your drive through RPG page. So you get those downloads on there um, and start building a customer base on drive through RPG. Those are huge. Um, and then uh, you know, so giving away something for free, putting then an like a little line or a link in your free thing, putting a uh, link in your free product to your paid product is always a good one, right? Because they download something free. Oh, you got something else. Click on that. Oh, it's four bucks. I'll buy four bucks. Um, why not? So do some of those things. Um, so yeah, somebody still asked about the Scritus, um to create PDFs um, at local libraries um, to access. Yeah, I, I don't know about that exactly. So have to think about that. Uh, if you're using Scribus, definitely look into that. Okay, somebody posts for public domain images, see open access images in the online collections, Metropolitan Museum of Art, Art Institute of Chicago, St. Louis Art Museum, et cetera. Absolutely. You can find lots of public domain uh, images in those places. A lot of art museums put up super high res images of some of the most iconic and beautiful artwork in the world. Um, somebody asked, does this advice covered in the talk also cover board games or is that totally different beast compared to TPT RPGs? You know, I really don't know because I've never done a board game. So I would imagine uh, it would be something else, but I'm sure there's some crossover, but I, I do apologize. I can't answer that question. It's, it's, it would be totally different. On stock art that you buy on drive through RPG, what do you have to include in your publication to credit the artist? Does each have their own requirements or is it standard similar to the OGL etc? Um, on drive through RPG, it is usually different for every artist, but most of the artists have started like copying what the uh, the other person says. So sometimes you just have to say art by so-and-so and then in the copyright say some artwork copyright by the certain artist. Um, but usually those are very similar for uh, drive through RPG. Um, you just have to you know, just some artwork credited by, and they'll usually, the the pro artists on there will have it in there. They'll, you know, you'll buy an image and you'll get like a readme file and it just says, hey, just say some art copyright by, and it'll have the artist name. And so that's, it's super simple. When should I sell on Amazon if I start on uh, drive through RPG? That's an interesting question. I mean, it depends on a lot of your goals. Um, um, I I started pretty quickly because um, I put up my thing on, you know, uh, my game Anarchy on drive through RPG. And then I also wanted a print copy that I could send a few of my friends. So I went through Amazon and I did that. Um, it just all depends on what you want to do. I mean, I would say kind of get your feet wet on drive through RPG, but if you make a product that, that it could also work as a print book, then go ahead and kind of dive into Amazon as soon as as you know, you got that up on drive through and you can kind of get your feet wet there. Doing print on drive through is harder. You will need some more files, uh, specific file types to go through and do your print on drive through RPG. So it would be easiest to, to put a, a PDF on drive through and then uh, go do your print on Amazon because Amazon, you can upload you can upload a word file and Amazon will figure out how to print it. Um, so uh, if if you think you have a book that could be print and you've already got your feet wet with drive through, then jump in and do it over there. Um, jump in on Amazon. All right, we got a lot of questions. We only have like seven minutes left. I'm going to try to fly through these. Uh, one note to all having attended copyright trademark seminar the other day, do not rely on the old method. You can mail yourself your work and have it automatically protected. That is largely not true. Yeah, that's absolutely not true. The mailing yourself the something just doesn't work at all. Uh, that's uh, that's ridiculous. I don't even know where that came from. Um uh, somebody is just saying thank you. Look forward to it later on Amazon uh, or on YouTube later. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, and then somebody else posted that somebody else gave another seminar similar about intellectual property. That would probably be great. I will, and they put a YouTube link. I will probably go and watch that myself because I need to learn more about copyrights and trademarks. Absolutely. Should I sell print versions on my own website? Um, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, you should. Uh, now you can do this in a number of ways. You can just put a link to Amazon or you can go through another like publishing place where you, you make more money and you can sell them on Amazon. That gets more and more complicated. Um, so keeping with my advice, if you haven't done any of this before, if you've never, you don't know the industry or anything like that, please take your time, learn some things. Um, if you really need to hit it and you really need to make money, then you can move quicker, but, you know, try to keep things one at a time, get a digital product up on drive through then get a print product up on Amazon, get another digital product up on drive through try some marketing, try some things here. Um, you know, I will tell you on Amazon, uh, my, my books didn't start to really sell on Amazon until I started doing Amazon ads. Um, Amazon ads changed everything. At first I was very angry about that, about the, you know, paying, you know, Jeff Bezos more money or whatever, but, um, that was just stupid. And that was just my little kid thing. I started doing the ads and it changed my life. Um, so once you get to a place where you have a number of books, like five, six, seven, maybe even 10 books on Amazon, you can really think about doing Amazon ads. And, uh, that would be, that's, that's the place where I, that, the whole company changed and my whole business changed. And I really started being able to take it seriously. Oh, this is a really good one. At what point do you need it to, to be looking into an ISBN? That's actually really good. I should have covered this. I should have put the section in here about ISBN numbers. Um, you don't need ISBN numbers for digital. So if you're just doing digital, don't worry about it at all. So an ISBN number, I guess I should say an ISBN number is, um, uh, like almost like a social security number for a book um, that, uh, and that's recognized, you know, worldwide that you should have this number in your books because we, we want to keep track of cultural, you know, cultural uh, improvements and cultural, uh, you know, things in our, in our culture. So we assign the book, the number, and it helps sales and stuff around the world. So when should you start doing this? When you start, when you start doing print, you should start look, you know, thinking about ISBN numbers. However, if you go to Amazon and you're going to do your print book through Amazon, they will, they will offer you a free ISBN. Um, that does not mean they own your book. That does not mean uh, they can take your intellectual property or anything like that. Um, it is just a service to really help people to be able to publish their books. Some of my first books, I could not afford to buy an ISBN. Okay, so I just got a free one from Amazon. Now, later on, I've looked into it. I've read a bit more about the ISBN numbers and things. And so I have purchased, I purchased a block of 100 ISBN numbers and I use those. So I use my own, um, but don't let it stop you. You know, because if you buy one ISBN number, it's like 120 bucks. So if you don't have 120 bucks, your business is not making any money. You don't know if this book is going to sell. Just take a free one from Amazon. And this is only for print. The digitals do not need those. Okay. Also, ISBN numbers. I think, though, I think the only thing I do know about another country, I think Canada gives them out for free. So uh, in Canada, if you're a Canadian citizen, you can get them for free. Um just as is, but in the United States, we have to pay and you only can go through one place. It's called Bowker or Bawker, B-O-W-K-E-R. Um, for some reason, they have a monopoly on this. Um, the site looks like it's a scam, right? I, I mean, I don't understand it. I don't know why this is something that we allow happen. I don't know. We need we need new laws on this. We need to change. Uh, we need to change some of this stuff. But um, only start thinking about it when you do print. But if your book, if it's your first book and you have no idea if it's going to make money, just take a free one from Amazon. Okay. Um, don't let it stop you. Uh, these are all things: the copyright, the ISBN. Oh, I don't have artwork. Uh, all these things are just excuses to not to not publish it, to not put your stuff out there, okay? Or taxes, oh, taxes, I can't figure out taxes. Well, if you're only gonna make a hundred bucks this year, 
eat taxes. Your, your taxes are fine. Um, don't worry about it. Those are, we just use those as excuses just to not do stuff, right? Just to not put ourselves out there, right? Because once we put ourselves out there, what happens? People trash your books, right? <laughs> People trash your stuff. I get, you know, I get tons of positive reviews, but man, I get negative reviews too. So um, don't, don't let some of these things, if this is something you want to do, don't, don't let it stop you. All right. Well, we just have about a minute left. Uh, if if you can, if you want to get a question in under the wire, what is the best strategy for pricing when starting? Oh my gosh, this is this is a oh this question. We could talk an hour on this question. Um, uh, if you're putting out one sheets or three sheets, just do uh, you know put a low price point on it. Look on look on drive through. RPG, look on drive through RPGs, find something comparable and put a, you know, a similar price onto it for that. Um, uh, what do you, do you find pay what you want to be profitable? Pay what you want is interesting. Um, and it can be, um, it, it just depends on what you're doing, right? It depends on your, your strategy of what you're doing. If you put something free on drive through RPG, you're going to get way more downloads than you do pay what you want. But pay what you want, you you know you can start making a little cash if people start throwing in a buck or two here or there. Um, so it just depends on what you want to do. Um, uh, somebody else asked, we are just right about over time, but somebody just asked, uh, is there anywhere else to advertise to advertise besides Amazon? Of course, um, Facebook. Um, you can do uh, on Drive Through RPG. You get publisher points, uh, PPP. You get like. I forget what it's called, publisher promotional points. And you can set up ads on there, basically like ads and have banners or have featured products on there. So those are really good. Um, you can advertise in a lot of places, right? There, It's it's almost wherever uh, conventions, you can advertise at conventions. Um, I'm technically, what am I doing right now, right? I'm marketing, I'm advertising, right? I'm giving these seminars, I'm letting you know about my stuff. Um, this is all marketing, right? This is all this, but I, I do hope to help people, right? I do hope to help people, but um, you can advertise in many places. Maybe I'll put together a seminar on marketing and advertising because um, uh, so there are so many questions and it's a big can of worms, right? So you can advertise in many, many places. Um, all right, we are a minute over. I don't want to keep anybody. I know there's other awesome seminars starting and I have another one in an hour that I'm doing myself. So I need to catch uh, a little bit of, something to drink here. Um, thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and again, this will be posted later on my YouTube channel uh, in case you missed anything. So thank you so much for joining today.